Hey guys, in this video we're gonna go over how we uh, the parsing in Sumo Logic, so um, so we could filter the queries like we want. Um, yes. All right, so let's start. First thing we need to log in. All right, so first thing you do, you need to go into the log search, but to actually get like the initial values, like because here this is gonna give you all the logs that you're getting. So you have here your uh, collectors, okay? I have here one uh, a Docker container that is collecting Docker logs and Docker stat. And th this is the Linux one, it's actually, we powered it off, okay? So inside the Docker container, the what I like to do is just click here and it will do the initial, um, actually no, I like to, let's click this one here because I wanna just get the Docker logs, okay? And if I wanna just get the Docker stat, which are in JSON format, I click on the docker stat okay all right so, so let's start so let's start by getting let's do here I don't want this I want the engine X okay and let's start by parsing with JSON okay so we're gonna go over like three parsing methods the first one is JSON which uh, to parse JSON values, and the second is gonna be um, just doing the parsing, the generic one, based on uh, very similar to regex, but not uh, cannot specify the regexes. And finally, we're gonna do a parsing with regex. Okay. So and also most of the time, whenever you're doing queries, I highly recommend just building from an existing uh, uh, from the Sumo Logic apps category itself. So here you have the apps pre-built. You have a Linux one. You have, uh, so for me, I use the Nginx one, which is already here someplace. And you could actually use the search here, why am I? Okay, so you could use the Nginx already, or, uh, the existing ones. And also, you, you saw that inside when we were doing, when we were using the wizard. And if you don't have it, you'll have to create your own parser. So in this case, we're gonna uh, showcase how we use our own. What is our, where were we? It was here. No, here, okay. All right, so we're checking. No, we want to. Okay, Docker stat. Yes. All right, so also like let's click here. All right, uh, I removed Docker stat, so I want to get all the files for this. So the logs and the stat. Okay, so we're collecting from multiple sources. But we want just the JSON output for now. So JSON, and the way you do it, it's actually uh, so you specify the path based on the. Uh, query is so let me show you just it's better so let's say the, the byte transmitted okay so tx byte and you copy field name and actually that's all you need to do so you see how it actually to give you this value here it's gonna you specify this path okay so the key consecu consecu consecutively to reach to the value and let's do here tx uh, tx byte all right, and if we run this job, and you can see we have added a column for the TX bytes. Also one uh, important uh, uh, element, if you do no drops, and uh, no drop, no drops. Okay, it also keeps the value that do not match this query. So whenever you're specifying the query, you could get like columns or values uh, from this query, and also it filters whatever doesn't match it. Okay, so what happened? It's still running. Um, let's make it uh, 16, uh, just to get some logs from uh, from the actual. Uh, all right, and you can see this is not in JSON format and does not match my query because we specified the no drop here. Let's make it just 15 minutes to make it faster. And also, if you want to gather multiple outputs, so here we got the network bytes. Let's check. Uh, let's check also the TX errors. Copy field name. So all you have to do is just, just do all this. TX errors. 
and as you can see it actually get this value for us and what you could do is like where just for fun uh, I think we're not gonna see any value and just for fun we run the where query here and you could see the TX errors that well nothing showed because all of them are less than zero or equal to zero actually that's good news anyway so we're doing parsing today only so this is what I just wanted to show in the JSON so let's move now to the uh, to just parsing logs and the way I'm gonna do it we're gonna use the nicest thing so so you have that example so you wanna parse this you click here it adds the star and we specify source IP and this also we do here comma time and, and let's name it message and submit and let's run this so here you could see how we queried that so I got the IP let's move this to the beginning you could drag it and you could see we got the IP the date time and the value let's make it more than 15 second minute okay so you want to query more you let's say you want to add uh, the post value uh, copy selected text so and let's do here backslash Bit of post you could write it yourself too but like I don't recommend doing that and here you could see all them all right a better way of doing it with parsing sometimes right so if you know like the location of the logs and the denominators the like um, or the messages or the dashes or whatever that's gonna divide the log you could use this one and it's uh, it's good enough but if you want to do like um, you could do parse with regex and here it is parse with regex you could also parse with xml i've not used it but uh, you could use that so the parse with regex as it says it is a regex so let's um, let's take the message let's use this one and the way i do it actually i go to regex 101 it's pretty nice to work with so what I'll do is here I'll specify the IP first. So and you got you got the idea, right? So what I wanna do is here, but like you need to put it the values that you wanna keep, you put them in parentheses, and what you need to do, so this you take it from here. You need to add this special element here just to know that this is value that you want. So it is question mark less arrow. You name it. So source IP and then you uh, bigger sign and you do the same thing inside the parentheses. The parentheses specify you need to know regex here, but like the element that you want. But when you put this, you give it a name and here you specify methods and then you run it. Hopefully it works perfect. And as you could see guys, so you got the value here. But as I said, I really recommend like just uh, check if the app already exists. And most of the time you could just uh, look at, like look at this one, all right? So you have the query, it's predefined for you, okay? And, and the way, the best way to learn from it, we're gonna go over all those, how to do where, the count by, and how it's happening. But so from a person perspective, like you don't need to do it all of it by yourself you know like look here it, it, it got everything for me that i need right so you but if your device doesn't if you know your device doesn't exist on so you have to create it yourself anyway i think that's enough for this video guys thanks for watching in the next video i think we'll go over um how to query this data and maybe the one afterward after it uh maybe we'll go dashboard or we'll see thanks for joining and please like and subscribe if you're interested in the videos or getting notified by the videos click the notification button and uh, see you thank you bye